Hello, welcome to the first episode in a new tutorial series where I'll be showing y'all how to make an RPG in Go. I'll be using Ebit Engine for this series because it seems to be the most popular game framework for it. This is a battle-tested framework, and if we go to their showcase page, it shows a few of their more popular releases that have been made with Ebit Engine. I think the most popular one out of these is Bear's Restaurant, which was pretty successful. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this series. So how is this going to work? This is going to be a bit different than just a sequential tutorial series. Yes, we're going to have a finished product by the end, but the tutorial videos are going to be separated into concepts rather than just episodes. So it's going to be, for example, this one's set up in window, the next one could be sprites, um, then we're going to be like sprite management, uh, level loading. It's not just going to be one, two, three, four. So that'll make it a little bit easier to reference um, in the future whenever you want to come back to a previous episode. So the first step in actually getting up and running is to install Go on your machine. Uh, the way you do that is you go to go.dev. This is where you can go to their download page by clicking on download. Then you just want to pick the correct installer for your operating system or build from source. I'm on Windows, so I would install this one in feature downloads for Microsoft Windows. Go ahead and run the installer and it should set up everything. To ensure that your Go installation was successful, open up a terminal and it doesn't matter where you are, just run go help. And if you get anything other than an error that Go is not defined, then your Go installation is successful. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna make a Go project. And for that, the first thing you wanna do is navigate to a directory where you want to put your project. And then we're going to create a new folder for it to live in. I'm going to be making a folder, I'm gonna call it RPG tutorial. So I'm using make dir RPG tutorial to make a new folder. I'm then going to CD into it. So change directories. And now I'm going to open it in my code editor of choice. Uh, for this series, I'm going to be using VS Code, and I recommend that you do the same because Golang is uh, Golang support in VS Code is very very strong. However, uh, Go is you know very flexible, and you can use whatever editor you like, and it won't affect the quality of the tutorials very much. So let's go ahead and run code dot, and we can open it up in VS Code. But right now it's just an empty folder. So how do we turn this folder into a Go project? Well, the way you do that is you open up the terminal. And for me, the terminal uh, shortcut is control backtick. We'll then be greeted with the directory that we're in. And we want to run a command called go mod init. And then we want to specify the name of our project. This can be changed at any time. So don't stress about getting your name right the first time. I'm just going to keep mine the exact same as the folder that I'm in. Press enter and you'll see that a go.mod file appears in your directory. If you click on that, it's very, very small. We just have a module called RPG tutorial and then the version of go. Additionally, it would be a great help when working with Go to install the Go language extension for VS Code. So we can open up the extensions with Control Shift X and then look up Go. It should be Go by the Go team at Google with 12 million downloads. Go ahead and install that and you should be good to go with syntax highlighting at all. Let's go ahead and make sure this all works by creating our first Go file. I'm gonna do main.go here, and Go works with packages. Packages are basically folder scoped um, sort of collections of code that can span across multiple files. And the way that you specify a uh, file is within this package is by typing in the package keyword and then the name of the package. For the package that actually contains the entry point of your application, this is specified by being package main. So for my main.go, I'm going to make it package main. And then the entry point for a uh, Golang project is just func main. Here we can just make a little print statement and do some hello world stuff. So I'll do this print line hello world. And the way that we run our project is we just open up our terminal and we just say go run dot and the dot means that we're running from our the current directory that we're in press enter and I see a hello world so that's how we know that go was installed successfully. Let's go ahead and get some graphics on the screen. Okay, so Ebit Engine luckily has some install documentation, so we can just go there. It's actually really easy to install Ebit Engine thanks to the way that Go manages its packages. What we can do is we can just copy their starter code here. So just control C, and then let's just go to our main.go here, select all, and then do control V to paste it. And you'll notice that we have a ton of errors, but if we go into our terminal here and we run go mod tidy, you'll see that it'll give some print statements finding module for Ebit Engine v2 and Ebit Engine util. Um, and look at that, it found them and it created a go.sum file. And this contains all of our dependency information, as well as you'll see that our go, our go mod file has some new stuff in it. 
And what's great is now our errors are gone. And if we run go run dot, we have a hello world program in game development style. So we have hello world printed on the screen here. Now I am currently running a window capture. So this is what it actually looks like on my screen. We have a window with hello world. So let's take a tour of the code that we just pasted in. So we understand what we're actually doing here. At the top, we're importing all of our dependencies. So we have Ebit Engine and Ebit Engine Util. And then we have this game struct. And what is this game struct? Well, let's see how we're using it. We're using it inside of this main function, which is where our actual program starts. The first thing we're doing is we're specifying the window size, then we're specifying the window title, and then we are running the game with this ebiten.run game. What does this run game uh, function do? Well, this run game takes in a game interface. This game interface basically has three different parameters. It has to be able to update, it has to be able to draw, and it has to have a layout. As long as you have those three methods implemented, it is considered an Ebit Engine game. So I could call this whatever I want. I could say, you know, struct foo, and look at that, it would work perfectly fine. I'm gonna keep it game for simplicity, but that's how interfaces work and go. It's a little bit weird if you're coming from a different language, but it's pretty cool because it's really, really flexible as we'll see in the future. All we're doing here is we're just running the game, catching any errors and logging them uh, so we know what's going wrong. So let's go ahead and actually change something from this Hello World program. Let's make it so that we have that classic light blue sky color that most games start out with. For that, we're going to go into the draw method here where all of our drawing happens, and I'm going to do screen.fill. This takes in a color, and I can just say color dot, and I'm gonna do an RGBA. Um, and let's see, for me, a light blue is, a, is 120, 180, 255, and 255. That should give us a pretty nice light blue color. Let's go ahead and do go run dot, and there you go, we have a nice light blue color. What you might notice about this is that I'm calling the screen.fill before I'm calling debug print. And this is the basic structure for how drawing works in Ebit Engine and a lot of other game frameworks. It is bottom to top. So you draw something, then you layer it on top, then you layer it on top. It's basically like stacking images on top of each other. If I were to, for example, uh, cut this out and paste it below where I'm printing hello world, and then run go run dot. What you'll notice is that we don't even see the hello world at all anymore. And that's because it is actually being drawn, but it's being immediately covered up by the blue before the frame is actually presented to the window. Some other things about Ebit Engine that are pretty cool is that the update method is a fixed time step. Uh, by default, it is fixed to 60 uh, ticks per second, but that can be adjusted with different uh, setting things here. There's a lot of different settings if you want to look at them. So you can do like ebitengine.set and look at all of these different settings that we can put. For example, we can do ebitengine.set window resize mode, and then we can do ebitengine.window resize mode enabled, and this will allow us to resize our window. So now we can resize our window no problem. But you'll notice that when we do maximize our window, we have these black bars on the sides. Now why is that? Well the reason is because Ebit Engine was created with pixel art in mind. You'll notice that this layout here, it has outside width and screen width here. And so what does this actually mean? You'll see that our set window size is 640 by 480, but we're returning 320 by 240. Basically what we're saying is, the window itself is going to be 640 pixels by 480 pixels, but the surface that we're drawing to is only 320 by 240 pixels. We're actually not resizing this at all whenever we are expanding our window. We're only resizing the window size itself. If we wanted our surface to be the same size as our window no matter what, then we would go over here and we would replace these values with ebiten.window size. And what you'll notice about this is that this window size returns two ints and that is immediately um, passed down to the return value of this layout. So cool stuff. Now what we'll notice is that if we do go run dot, we have this window, we resize it and check it out. Our window is covering the whole screen. So yeah, that's about it for the first episode. We got Go installed and we have Ebit Engine loaded with a window resizing. So that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, in the next video, we'll cover things like drawing things on the screen and getting things moving around. So uh, stay tuned until then. 
And if you want to follow along with the journey a little closer, consider joining my Discord where I and some other game developers all hang out. Uh, it's a pretty cool place and you can ask all your questions there. Also consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue making videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. See ya.